it was in Pozzuoli. So it was just outside of Naples and it was also really pretty there. <laughs> there are not a lot of sisters that serve in the Naples zone because of its it's known for being quite a dangerous area, <laughs> or at least Naples is, the city of Naples. Um, and so sisters don't serve Naples, at least for now. <laughs> but um, so we had the, it was just the two of us in my area and we were with two elders and it was just a branch. And it was a really interesting branch. There were, it was probably divided up into three parts and there was also another military base nearby. So there were a lot of Americans that didn't want to live on the base that um, lived out in like the Italian neighborhoods. And so they lived near our branch in Pozzuoli. And so the branch is probably divided in one third Italian, one third American and one third African. <laughs> So you had all different cultures going on and it was actually really fun. <laughs> you got like the best of three worlds. <laughs> um, and it was, it was just really pretty. Pozzuoli is a beautiful city, just gorgeous. And it's right near the, um, right near the, the shore, near the ocean. And so there's a boardwalk in the city and um, yeah, it was just a really quaint, really cute town. And so you have like your Italian side of Pozzuoli and then you have um, your, I guess, African side. There were, we take this big um, nasty bus to like um, about 45 minutes away to these um, big, big city called Casa Volturno where they're just, it's known for mostly Africans that live there. And um, so you'd have, you'd have different sides. Um, and Italians live there as well, but um, that was that was really fun to just te be able to teach the Italian culture, and then also it just felt like I was serving a mini mission in Africa, <laughs> and I loved the Africans. That's where I really started to teach them and get to know them. Um, and then Naples is right nearby. It's not in our not in our area, but we were able to go there for P day. And when I was there, we had district meeting there, but I don't think they do district meeting there anymore. Also in that area, they speak the dialect of Napolitano, um, so I guess Neapolitan, I guess that's how you'd say it. <laughs> and that is a complete, completely different language and they, they speak that pretty heavily there, but they do speak Italian. <laughs> but it's fun. It, I have been in some lessons where some people just like, they forgot their Italian and so you're just struggling to like, <laughs> and praying to be able to understand <laughs> what, they're, what they're saying with their Napolitano. The pizza is fantastic there. Eat as much pizza as you can get <laughs> because Naples is known. It is like the capital of pizza of the world. So you will enjoy some pretty dang good pizza. <laughs> there. There's also a volcano nearby, um, Mount Vesuvius. It's actually in Naples. And so you can, you can see that and our church was actually in, so it was a branch, and it, was, it wasn't in a typical church building, but it was in, um, I believe, it was just like some apartment building, huge apartment building that we just bought out. I think it actually used to be like some kind of grocery store. And so it's, it's a really interesting layout of a church. It's like three levels. Yeah, I just, I loved it. It was really good. <laughs> Definitely have funny memories from being on that bus that bus that we would take out to that city um, where most Africans lived. And um, yeah, they just, <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just, um, it was kind of hit or miss with the bus. And because it was such a long bus ride, you would want to get, you'd want to get a, a, a seat or else you would just be standing the whole way. And um, more often than not, it would be chock full of people standing up. And I just remember it would get to our bus stop near our apartment and the doors would open and it would just be chock full to the brim of people and mostly, mostly Africans because that's where they're heading. Um, they would come and work in Naples and then they would take their bus all the way back. Um, and so you would just have to like dive in and squeeze in. So you get used to it. <laughs> But, um, just, I guess, I don't know. I, I just, I had some definitely 
fun, colorful experiences on the bus. <laughs> so just try to get a seat uh, whenever you can and avoid the crazy people. <laughs> but you'll be all right. Like, I should have said this my first city, but I just, you, you just feel protected. And I think if I went back now and I, I was walking around just not as a missionary, I would definitely feel a lot more fear. <laughs> And I just think that the Lord protects you so much. And I remember asking my trainer this, that I just walking through crazy Sicily and, and crossing like kind of crazy streets. And she was just like, always had a smile on her face. And I just thought like, is she scared? Like, this is kind of scary. Like if my parents knew I was here. Um, but I, one time I asked her, I was just like, so do you get scared? scared or are you just are you not really scared because you're a missionary and she's like yeah <laughs> I don't I, because I'm a missionary I just I don't feel that that need to like fear so I mean it's important to be to be smart and to follow mission rules and follow traffic rules and, and crossing the street and things like that uh and obviously follow the spirit but um Generally, you'll be, you'll be protected. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we taught this one man named Pepe. And he, um, this was in, in Pozzuoli, in Naples. And he um, was this 74-year-old like, man. And when I came into the area, he, the sisters before me had found him. And um, he was golden. He was so good. And he um, was such an amazing man. Um, I respect him so much for what he has given up and that is not a difficult thing. That is a pretty big feat to find an old Italian Catholic man willing to take the discussions and eventually get baptized. <laughs> and he gave up his, um, he was practicing his Catholic religion and he gave up alcohol, gave up smoking, um, he gave up so much. He gave up, um, he risked family relationships for the church because he, he felt so strongly about it. And, and um, he, <laughs> he's definitely not like your typical sweet, like grandfatherly man. He, um, even though he has really sweet intentions, he's just like really intense when he talks to you. But anyway, I, I remember um, a really sweet experience that he, so we would teach him on a bench outside of his store he and his wife owned a store nearby and so we teach him on a bench. And um, so we would often teach him in the daytime and then we'd have to run and get a bus and take it to another city. And I remember it was my companion and me and we had to go. We were saying, okay, Pepe, like I think we ended with a prayer and um, we said, we have to go, we have to go catch the bus. And all of a sudden he started talking about, um, started sharing an experience with us. He's like, yeah, the other day my cart broke down and, and my companion and I were like looking at each other like, oh, he's going to go into this whole like monologue and oh, we have to go. <laughs> and, um, he, he started ta talking about how like his car broke down and some, something like that with his car. And he was just like really frustrated and he didn't know what to do. And he was just going on and on and sharing all these details. And all of a sudden he just started to break down a little bit and just started to cry. And he just said, and I just, I, I prayed to Heavenly Father to help me and to help me get this fixed and um, and he's definitely not emo not an emotional man and so it was just a really sweet experience and he just said how the Lord blessed him and he know he knew that the Lord answered his prayer and, and helping him fix his car and we just had to like stop and just like forget everything and just listen and um, it was a really touching experience. Um, that was really neat. <laughs>